I'm Dory Cleaver, and I'm the author of Morigami. Well, I know that some authors wrote a lot of stories when they were kids, and I might have done that. I know that I've got some stories that I wrote in school that were saved over the years. But mostly I think I was a letter writer. I used to write letters to my grandparents. I grew up in Atlanta and I had one set of grandparents that lived in South Florida and another set of grandparents that lived in Alabama. And so I wrote letters to them and it was great because they would write back and I loved going down to the mailbox every day and waiting for their letters. And what was really great about my grandparents who lived in Alabama is that they saved all these letters. And not only did they save them, but on top of their furniture, they had these glass coverings. So uh, the room where I would stay when we went to visit in Alabama, the dresser had this giant piece of glass that was there, I guess, to protect the top of the furniture. But what my grandmother did was she took letters from all of her grandchildren and she slid them under the glass and so they were on display. And at the time, I really enjoyed it because I could pull them out and read back on what had been going on in my life a year before or two years before and my cousins also. Um, I was definitely the most prolific letter writer. I had more letters in there than anyone. And when I look back on it now, I really treasure that memory because it makes me realize how important those letters were to her, that she was keeping them out and preserving them. The other thing I did when I was a kid was I did keep a daily journal. And I mean, you can imagine a 10 year old's journal, it's not very riveting, but just every day I sat down and I wrote, here's what happened to me today and here's how I felt about it. And that was a great writing habit. It was a great way to get in the habit of writing every single day whether I'd had a good day, bad day. Um, so that's probably what got me started on feeling really comfortable as a writer. Outside of being an author, I'm really involved in issues affecting gifted children. And one of the things I know about gifted kids is that when something doesn't come easily for them, a lot of times they give up because they feel like if I'm not great at it, then that might make me look bad and make me look like I'm not as smart as everyone thinks I am. And so what I love about this book is there's a message here that even if you're not good at something when you start, that's okay. And you should continue trying and continue working at it because when something is difficult, it's very normal for it to not be easy when you start. And that's a message that I think is really important for all children. Uh, but sometimes we don't think about those kids who are really good at some stuff, but maybe not as good as they'd like to be at other things, and so they give up on things they might be passionate about. There was a song that I think the Muppets did, and probably they weren't the first to do it, but uh, it was, if just one person believes in you. And that, to me, is the underlying message of this book. People keep talking about it being about, a, about practice and about patience, which it is. But it's also about having that one person who's willing to give you a chance, who believes in what you're doing, and that's why Mr. Lopez was so important in this story. The perfect reader for this book is somebody who's trying something new and is not good at it. And maybe not only do they need to be patient with themselves, but maybe they need a little patience from somebody around them. I think of not just a little kid, but maybe a kid in fourth or fifth grade who's trying to learn the clarinet for the first time. And not everybody in the house is going to be happy when you start trying to learn to play the clarinet because it's unpleasant for everybody else. But that we have to understand art takes time. And when art begins, it's not always great. And we have to be patient and wait for us to get better at doing our art. The best advice I've been given was given to me by my friend Tony Early, who's also an author. Uh, he wrote a book called Jim the Boy, which I think is probably one of the most beautifully written books I've ever read. And he and I knew each other from North Carolina. He grew up in a really small town in North Carolina, and I ended up working in that town as a newspaper reporter. He had also worked there as a newspaper reporter, and he went on to be a very acclaimed novelist. 
And so I had been writing for quite a while. I had worked in newspapers. I had done some business writing. And I decided that I really wanted to try writing fiction. And I wrote to Tony and I said, what's the best way for me to make this transition? Do I need a master's of fine arts? Because that's what he had done. What other classes should I take? What should I do? And he said, if you really want to be a writer, sit down and start typing. And that's the more you talk to different writers, the more you hear that, that there's just no excuse and no other way other than sitting down and doing the work. And um, I'm glad that I listened to what Tony had to say, because I definitely didn't think that I had the tools to write fiction at all. The only time I had written fiction was when it was assigned to me in school. So I had really no experience. And kind of like Joey in the story, I had to be a little bit more patient with myself than I normally am. Um, I had been already writing for 20 years when I started trying to write children's books, but I was terrible at writing children's books. And it took some patience on my part to say, it's okay that I'm not good at this, I just started. And um, just by writing and writing, finally uh, you end up with something that's decent. The most memorable response that I've had, uh, I have a friend who lives out in California, and when I got my very first copies of Morigami, the first one that went out my door went to my friend Mike in California. Mike and I grew up in the same neighborhood. Uh, we went to high school together, and he has gone on to be a writer for network television. And so he and I have had conversations over the years that really have helped me keep going as a writer. Sometimes when I get frustrated, um, the fact that he talks to me like I'm a real writer, even though I just had no idea what I was doing, really helped me keep going. So he gave the book to his daughter. And then a couple days later, he sent me a little video clip of her saying, There you go, sweetie. And, um, that's probably the most memorable response that I've had because she had just been introduced to the book the day before and she was asking for it again. And when you write a children's book, for me, that's been what I'm after is to not only have a child enjoy hearing the book, but want to reread the book. That's, that's where it's at. And that just melted me. to say as a child I was not like Joey. I was interested in a whole lot of different things. Uh, for example, I played a lot of basketball as a kid, which is strange because I'm only 4'10", but I grew up around basketball and so uh, I enjoyed basketball and other sports outside. I was a big reader. I liked to draw. I liked to paint some. I had a lot of different hobbies, but I didn't have the patience with myself that Joey has. Joey in this book understands that it's gonna take time and I'm gonna have to practice. Unfortunately, I was one of those kids that if I was really interested in something like drawing, but I could see that other people were better than me, I felt like I should quit that because I'm not meant to do that. Because if I was meant to do with it, I would just be naturally the best. So for me, I was interested in a lot but I didn't have that one thing that I knew I was absolutely meant to do.